Hey folks, how you doing? This is Brian, and uh, just north of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And this is my rocket mass heater. It's been five days of really hard work in order to get this done, and I thought it was done like around five different times, and it wasn't. So I kept on finding little leaks here and there, had to seal up. But anyways, for those people who don't know what a rocket mass heater is, uh, it's a pretty efficient way of burning wood. When most people have to burn four or five cords of wood um, a year, depending on where they live, uh, with a rocket mass heater, you should only have to burn maybe a cord to a, a half a cord to a cord of wood if it's set up right and depending on the size of the house and your climate and everything. But anyways, I'd like to go ahead and explain a lot of things. I have some questions afterwards for those people who may be able to answer those questions for me because I'm by no means a professional. Um, this is only my second rocket mass heater that I've ever done. And the last one I posted quite a long time ago. I've learned a little bit since then. Anyways, I'd like to first go through the construction of this. I'll talk about the weight of everything, the price and all these different things and how things work. Um, so I started off, and I'm sorry, I, don't, I do have the pictures. Maybe I can post them at a later time, but I'll just go ahead and explain what I did here. Uh, I started off uh, at the bottom of the floor with a three-quarter inch plywood to reinforce the floor a little bit. On top of that, I put a, a strip of metal all the way around, lining the whole entire base of the rocket mass heater. After that, I uh, put some uh, 16 by 16 by 3.5 blocks, which weighed 76 pounds a piece, uh, lining the whole entire outside perimeter of... Um, the bench seats and uh, it's basically one whole bench seat it's all hollow in the center um, in between the block and underneath the flagstone it's all hollowed out those are where all the exhaust gases go into before they go up the six inch pipe um, on top of the um, or before I put the flagstone on I put uh, some refractory cement on the bottom to seal out any leaks and on the inside of the seams and the outside of the seams of the block, I sealed that with refractory mortar that you can buy at Home Depot and caulking tubes for like four bucks a piece. Um, I used uh, <clears throat> 16 of the concrete block. Each one of them weighed um, 76 pounds a piece. Came out to be around 1,216 pounds. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm going to try to make this a little bit short. The weight of the whole entire thing, all together with everything, is approximately 2,700 pounds, just for your information. If you multiply that by approximately 28 square feet, where this covers, this area covers, it's about 100 pounds per square foot. So that's just for your information. It's really heavy. Um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't shore up the floor underneath. I didn't do anything underneath the floor, but, you know, I don't know what could happen. I need to talk to a structural engineer. That's one of the things I have questions. You know, is it possible for, uh, you know, there's around six or seven two by sixes that are underneath the floor. Uh, below that, there's steel I-beams. Um, uh, every so feet, there's some steel I-beams, and those are sitting on concrete pads or concrete blocks, and those concrete blocks are sitting on concrete runners underneath the uh, manufactured home. So, doesn't look like it's going anywhere, I don't know, but I could be wrong. <laughs> 100 pounds per square foot, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going uh, to be, to hear opinions on that matter. Um, so that's all, the, and then on the front here, I just put red brick, uh, their thin one inch brick on the top portion of it. Um, it's just decorative for now, they're not mortared in. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do something different on the front of this uh, that will look even better uh, at Home Depot in the tile department they have this natural stacked rock it's called honey pine or something like that I'm not sure honey something and it's not very expensive and it'll look really really good um, so the brick is there just temporarily um, this is a batch box rocket mass heater uh, the box is a little bit smaller than what most batch box heaters are uh, this one is 13 inches wide by 13 inches high by 18 inches deep. Behind uh, the batch box, um, there is a uh, heat, the lower portion of the heat riser, which is 5 inches by 5 inches by 13 inches high. 
It's all surrounded by fire brick. It's all layered in fire brick. On the outside of that, I have some red brick on the top here. Uh, yesterday, I had a tile on here for my first burn. I was thinking to myself that, okay, these things are fired under 2350 degrees, so they're not going to crack because the box is probably not going to get over 700, 800, whatever, depending on how much wood I put in there. So I put the tile on there, but guess what? It cracked. So what I did is I replaced the tile um, with another tile, but this time I put ceramic fiber blanket uh, underneath the tile, and underneath that I put a piece of uh, stainless steel metal, uh, which goes, uh, spans over the top. So hopefully that's going to provide a little bit of a heat shield as well as some support. Um, the Inside the 55 gallon drum here I have a heat riser. Uh, Matt, I'm sorry I didn't get your email until I started creating this thing. Uh, and I already started to do the uh, perlite and clay mixture as a heat riser to pack it. Uh, the heat riser is a 6 inch pipe with, an eight, with a 10 inch pipe around it. It's packed with perlite and clay. However, I didn't have enough mixture, so I basically have a hybrid heat riser because on the top of the heat riser, I put ceramic fiber material on top of the packed perlite and clay. So I got two inches of ceramic uh, blanket, ceramic fiber blanket on the top. And so it's like half and half. <laughs> so we'll just see how it does in the future. If I have to reconstruct it, I will do um, an 8 inch pipe with a 6 inch pipe and the 1 inch uh, ceramic uh, fiber in between. I think it is a better idea. Um, or I won't even use, as Matt told me, um, don't even use the interior pipe because it's eventually going to deteriorate. I agree with that. Um, and so, by the way, I wanted to thank Matt Walker very much for his excellent videos, very informative. Uh, his, the answers to my questions were really excellent, I really appreciate it, thank you very much. Um, a lot of good videos, Walker Stoves, um, check it out. And so, um, what, this is the another thing I wanted to mention is that the, the, the entrance to, for the uh, exhaust into the bench seats, which are completely hollow. I guess you can call these uh, the stratification chamber concept. Um, is there's a five inch by five inch hole uh, right over here where I'm pointing at the base of the barrel in the flagstone. It's directly in the flagstone. So as the exhaust fumes go up the heat riser, they vortex in the barrel. They come down directly through the flagstone through a 5 inch by 5 inch uh, hole, which is approximately a, the same square inches as a 6 inch uh, pipe. Then it fills up the whole entire bench seat with the exhaust gases, and then it takes out the lower temperature gases from the base of the bench seat through this pipe right here. Um, at the base of this pipe, this pipe goes all the way down to the floor and I have a 5 inch by 5 inch square cut in the side of the pipe for the exhaust fumes to go out. Just to let you know, one thing I've learned with this concept of introducing air on the top and then taking out from the bottom, you have to make absolutely sure that you have a very tight system. In other words, everything is sealed very well because I kept on sealing it and finding more leaks, sealing it and finding more leaks. Uh, originally I put the flagstone on uh, the refractory mortar mix that I made from Portland cement, silica sand, and clay and the air, the smoke and the air still escaped because it wasn't perfectly sealed. So what I did was I took a either refractory mortar in the caulking tube or I used high temperature silicone and I sealed uh, all the way around underneath uh, the flagstone with that to keep uh, anything from escaping. So it did work, it, everything seems to be really tight now and um, so I'm happy with the way that went. Uh, I think I explained already about the size of the batch box. 
I don't know if I explained the port. The port in the back is designed for a six inch system, which is two and a half inches uh, wide by nine inches high. Um, and then there's a five inch by five inch by 13 inch lower heat riser behind the batch box portion of the combustion chamber. Um, I guess I can explain real quick the door. Uh, thank you, Matt, again for the idea about creating the door out of aluminum. I was able to get this aluminum from a hot tub cover. Uh, a hot tub cover uh, at the ends, sometimes they have aluminum channels, and I used that to make this door. Uh, it turned out pretty good. I got the glass from an old wood stove that I had, so that's a high temperature ceramic glass, and so I was pretty happy the way it came out. The only thing is, um, I needed to put a metal frame around here, which I haven't done yet. I probably will in the near future. Either that or I'll put some anchors that are made out of metal into, um, directly into the brick. I don't know if I should do that or not, but I might try it that way. Um, okay, let me go through my list here. Um, oh, I, I did uh, put the uh, heat riser two inches from the top of the barrel, so the bottom, you know, the, the top of the heat riser is about two inches below the top of the barrel. Um, hopefully that's okay. Um, I was kind of disappointed uh, with starting up the system because uh, the air was not sucking good. Not even if I, even if I lit the paper all the way to the back of the batch box, and even though I was throwing paper in a real lot, it wasn't drawing very good. Um, some of that may have been contributed to uh, some leaks that I may have had, but now that they're all sealed up, I'm hoping for a better burn tonight. Um, and I also added about five feet of smoke stack uh, vent uh, out the roof. So I'm hoping that will help too. Um, I didn't, I, I actually installed, uh, because it wasn't drawing even after doing those things, I installed a CPU fan, a four inch CPU fan, right at the very top of the pipe and I don't want to have to do that. So if there's something that maybe I could do differently, um, you know, or could have did differently regarding getting a greater draw, that's one of my questions. So uh, let me know what you guys think about creating more draw or what about this system could be improved upon. Any, any advice and information is greatly appreciated. Um, okay, another, well, <laughs> this could be one of the problems. I didn't install a P-channel yet. Um, I would like some more information about the B-channel. I'll probably do some more research. If there's anything you can include in the comments, I would be interested in seeing that. I have some one inch by one inch steel channel. Uh, I wanted to ask anybody who might know the answer to that question, is one inch by one inch steel channel good? Is that okay uh, to use? And also my second question about the P-channel. Uh, can it be around six inches in front of the rear port, or can it be in the closer to the center of the stove going down, or should it be closer to the rear port? Um, that's a question I have. If anybody can answer that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I already talked about the draw. Uh, I talked about the weight. I don't know if I two thousand seven hundred pounds. That's the total weight of all of this together, 2,700 pounds. It covers an area of 28 square feet. Turns out to be 100 pounds per square foot. Um, cost me about, uh, a lot of this material I got recycled. I had to pay for the flagstone, it was about 80 bucks for the four pieces that I paid. I already had one piece of flagstone. Um, I got a lot of recycled material. I probably spent around 300 and 80 bucks, total out of pocket expenses, some on credit, some on, you know, uh, just expenses. So, um, what else can I say? Uh, already asked about the P channel. I guess that's about it. That's all I can think of for right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to make some input and uh, let me know what you think. Um, also, I did want to ask one other question. 
I noticed on some of the batch boxes that other people have created on YouTube, they have the angled stones on the uh, angled uh, fire brick cut at a 45 degree angle on the bottom. Um, does that help? Uh, what is its purpose? Those types of things. Uh, I think those are the questions I had. Thank you for joining me. Uh, feel free to leave some comments. And if there's any update to this, uh, I will let you know. Actually, I just remembered something. The temperatures. Um, last night, the barrel got up to like 500 degrees in about six minutes. So that was pretty impressive. Um, I did have to feed the fire. Uh, it, it, it was a relatively slow burn, so it was kind of nice. The nice thing about this is I do believe it's really safe because when I put the temperature uh, gauge, the laser digital thermometer on the wall, it never got over 112 or something like that. So that was pretty cool. There's some numbers for you. Got up to 500 degrees on the top. It would go down pretty quickly. Just as it rose quickly, it also decreased quickly um, when the fire started going out. Uh, bottom of the barrel didn't get too hot, maybe like, maybe like 250. And uh, the nice thing also is about the stove vent. The stove vent never got over, I think, 120 at the most. The maximum temperature on the stove vent uh, going out, you know, 120 at the most. Uh, when I went to sleep, the bench seat was 130 degrees. Um, closer to the combustion chamber in this area, about 130 degrees. And when I woke up this morning, it was still radiating 75. I didn't have that long of a fire going. I probably could have made it longer. I think it was around a two and a half hour fire. I, the tonight, I would probably might want to maybe make a four hour fire and get the temperature in the house up a little bit more, but this is a lot of area to heat also. So just for your information. So I'll go ahead and upload this video now. Um, thanks again. And I'll keep you posted. Have a good evening.